Well, I turn around and I give back to my community any of the money I get from lobbyists with school supplies, shredded events. So I don't, that's what I do. I give it back to District 62. Folks, are you going to buy this story? Folks, it's pay for play here. These large corporations, real estate developers, they're not making large donations to politicians because they like you so much and they just want to give free money. They want something for that money. That's the way the state house has always ran. You just watched a candidate for state representative in Rhode Island saying exactly what needs to be said on the campaign trail, calling out her right wing opponent by mentioning some of the uh, cor corporate money that goes into uh, her campaign. I apologize, a centrist opponent, I shouldn't say right wing, centrist opponent, which there's a lot of agreement between centrist and right wingers, let's keep it real. But in this exchange, uh, you see Kimberly uh, DeCoop, uh, that is the progressive candidate calling out um, the corruption of Mary Messier, who is the centrist, okay? so. Uh, be sure to listen closely to this next clip because you'll hear uh, Messier's abysmal excuse for the corporate money that's flowing into her campaign coffers. I think the articles are already coming out letting us know that this is a bad deal. So for everyone that's there, I want you to understand that 36 million of what's getting used at the stadium is bond money that was supposed to go towards housing and commercial real estate. So we chose to put that money towards the stadium as opposed to making a debt in the housing crisis. And it'd be very clear for folks if they weren't taking money from some of the stadium lobbyists like Mary Duff. Excuse me? Yeah, I mean, you've taken money from some of the stadium lobbyists. No, I have not. Oh. No, I have not. Oh. Yes, Who are they? Who are they? Let me read you the names of the folks. Who are they, Kimberly? Nicholas Hammond, Peter Batista, Zachary Darrow, William Murphy. These are the lobbyists for the stadium currently. They are lobbyists for many things at the State House, not just the stadium. And one of them is the stadium. And actually, one of them is also a lobbyist for fossil fuel companies. So there you go as well. No, I mean, they gave me bribes for more than just the stadium. That's her uh, abysmal response and excuse, Jake. Yeah, <laughs> no, look, I love this because I need more of this. Yeah. And so uh, this is actually a very logical, very easy line of attack. You could do it to any corporate Democrat. Uh, they all take lobbyist money, they all take corporate money, and they all do exactly what their donors tell them to do. And so the only reason people didn't do it in the past is because uh, corporate media would come in and yell at them and go, "Oh, that is uncivil." In fact, it's literally what happened to me when I ran for Congress. I called out my opponents' uh, lobbyist money and corporate money over and over and over again, and the media universally said that I was rude for mentioning that she was getting campaign contributions. They defended her and they said, "Do not vote." Basically, their message was. Do not vote for Jenk because he's not corrupt. And it's very rude to point out his opponent's corruption. Well, now a lot of progressives are saying, no, we don't agree. We're gonna call out the corruption. Yes, campaign contributions are obvious bribes. They're meant to influence your vote. They're not meant to you know, give you a hug for no reason. They're not giving you money so you don't vote with them. These are the most obvious things in the world. But I love that progressives now have the courage, a new generation of progressives have the courage to say obvious things. And you know what? It bothers the corporate Democrats so much. She was so offended that she walked out. Yeah. That's how you win. So uh, Mary Messier uh, packs up her stuff soon after that exchange and then sits at the table pouting for another few minutes. And then she gets really testy when Kimberly challenges her yet again. So let's watch that. Or being represented by somebody who does take corporate donations, takes lobbyist donations, somebody who lives very comfortably when a lot of the city isn't comfortable at all. Excuse me, if I live comfortably, it's because I worked all my life since the age of 10 delivering newspapers. You think well, you're I, the only one who has worked? No, but you make it sound like I never did. And I, I resent that. The upper no, class white woman resents it. I mean, you're reaching out to accept yeah, lobbyist okay. donations. The lobbyists don't even know my name because I'm actually working class. We'll, we'll see what you, what you do. What I 
love about this whole situation is regardless of what happens in this race, what's important is that it's in the very least a moment of important information for the voters who are paying attention to this, right? Because it's important for people to have in their consciousness how government actually works, what really motivates the policy decisions that lawmakers, whether it be on a state and local level or federal level, why it is they make these decisions? What are the motivating factors behind the scenes? And I think now more than ever, people are aware of the corruption and the bribery that takes place and how it's baked into our political system. But what's also amazing to me is how full grown adults immediately go into baby mode as soon as they're confronted with accurate information about their own behavior and campaigning. It's like they feel so entitled to patty cakes constantly. And it's like, listen, Mary, you're a full grown adult. You're taking the money from these corporations. You should be prepared to defend why you would take that money. And so far, all we've gotten is pouting, a lot of excuse me's, and also claims that she's a hard worker. Okay, but hard workers get corrupted all the time. We see it in DC all the time. Yeah, um, so it's a weird defense that the corporate Democrats and corporate media usually fall back on. It's the same defense that the head of the National Press Club made when I challenged corporate media at the National Press Club in DC. So, you know, you said all these things about corruption, but we work really hard. So, but wait a minute, that doesn't have anything to do with the issue, right? I'm not saying that you're lazy, I'm saying that you're pushing the agenda of your advertisers. You might be pushing it really hard. Congrats, you work really hard at that. So, in this case, you're a politician in Rhode Island that's taking tons of lobbyist money and you're doing exactly what the lobbyists want. Maybe you're working really hard at that, but that's that's not a silver lining. That makes it worse. And yeah. and it was you see how incredibly defensive she got because they're not used to being challenged on this. They're used to coasting on it. Of course I take the bribes. Every politician takes the bribes. What now you don't want us to take the bribes? Yes, that's right. We don't want you to take the bribes. And she weirdly said there before she got up in a huff and left um Something about how, oh yeah, that's what the upper class white woman says. But wait, the the other candidate, the progressive candidate didn't say anything about race. Why did you weirdly make it racial? I got news for you, unfortunately, plenty of minorities in Congress also take the bribes. This doesn't have anything to do with the race. It has to do with, are you taking the lobbyist money or aren't you? And I, I feel like the corporate Democrat there was looking around in the room like, where's the press? You're supposed to protect me. Well, why, why isn't my guard here? Okay, reporters yell at her, yell at her for saying things that are true, right? Yeah. Well, they will later, trust me, don't worry, they, they're gonna get your back. But for this moment, in that moment, you panicked and you left the room uh, and you had no answers. And so, I love it. And by the way, this uprising in Rhode Island is the best. Uh, all of these progressive candidates in Rhode Island are like, no, nope, we're gonna call out corporate corruption, lobbyist corruption of our opponents. And we're not gonna give a damn what the corporate media says. I'm here for it. So she probably randomly decided to mention race because she realizes that the policies that she supports in the state overwhelmingly impact minorities in a negative way, especially minorities who are employed in minimum wage jobs. For instance, during the debate, Mary Messier also fear mongered about raising the minimum wage and how that's gonna hurt the economy and get rid of jobs. She opposed any meaningful reform when it comes to the tax system that obviously gives wealthy people a massive advantage and gives them tax cuts. She said that she supported some form of universal health care, but then proceeded to only talk about long wait times under a single payer healthcare system or a universal healthcare system. And she also lauded a $5,000 yearly grant to a soup kitchen from the state when she was asked, you know, if she would expand social services. Okay, and I wanna just end on one final video because as DeCoop was giving her closing statement, Mary Messier behaved exactly how you would expect her to, let's watch. 
it's clear things aren't working for working families. Low wages, high rent, a tax code that is in many ways progressive um, and out in the open, pay for play. It doesn't have to be this way. We can have a vibrant city with a government who cares for us. But I think we need to be brave enough to stand up for what we deserve. Good schools, good union jobs, Thank you, everyone. a clean environment, affordable yeah. quality housing. These are the things that make life dignified for people here. Man, that is embarrassing, super embarrassing. God. Yeah. I mean, it, look, acting I, like a freaking toddler during a debate, you're running for elected office. You want a position of power, and you can't even handle being an adult who respectfully sits through the debate that you've agreed to engage in. Toddler, that woman is a toddler. And if you notice, she went and very cordially shook, shook the hand of the Republican in the race. The corporate Democrat and the Republican have been playing patty cakes their entire careers all across the nation. And, and you see how the corporate Democrat hated the progressive so much more than the Republican. Perfectly happy to agree with the lobbyists and the Republican, but a progressive telling the truth, ah, so angry I have to leave right away. Okay, it was incredibly disrespectful to leave in the way that she did. Look, in Rhode Island, it's called a cooperative. It is a slate of progressives that are running all across the state, and it's looking to take over the Democratic Party. And that would be fantastic. Go support them. Their elections are coming up. Matt Brown's running for governor. Cynthia Mendez is running for lieutenant governor. They've both been on TYT. They're as good of progressives as you'll ever see. Cynthia Mendez pulled the same thing on her corporate Democratic opponent in a debate that also got a lot of attention. Keep going. Gregory Greco is a former Wolfpack guy. He was on the conversation. He's part of the cooperative. He's running for Cynthia's Senate seat. And here you see Kimberly Ducoupe, a great progressive, also joining in and doing the right thing. So let's go get him in Rhode Island. Make sure the cooperative wins and we take another state. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.